Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to Synchronicity. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. I'm truly so incredibly grateful for this very moment. I'm at this very, very uh, important and very moving astrology conference here in Mexico City called Enastrome. And I have the great privilege of meeting and learning from some of the most brilliant astrologers in Mexico, yes, but in the Latin world as well. And in particular, friends and fans out there who are have been watching me for a while know that uh, Mexico certainly is a place that has uh, been a, an important part of my spiritual growth this last year and a half. And the Mayan culture as well, the spirituality, the land, there's so much here that has been um, truly incredible for me and my growth personally, yes, spiritually, but also as an astrologer as well. And so here at this conference, I get to celebrate all of that, which is such a, a such a thrill. But also I get to share some incredible astrologers as well. And right now I'm truly very excited, very grateful. I'm here with Yuri. And Yuri is, uh, I just watched her talk. It was brilliant. And it was all about Mayan um, astrology and connections to the suns. And it was just so beautiful. And we were talking a little bit informally. And uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing this moment. Thank you so much for being here, Yuri. Thank you. I'm so excited to meet you and yet to meet everybody and to be here with you. Thank you for your interview. <laughs> of course. So, uh, first of all, please forgive me because um, you have a very beautiful Latin name. Maybe one day <laughs> I'll be blessed by somebody to get that. But give me, uh, per, please, um, what is your full name, your full Latin name? And how do you refer to yourself as an astrologer or Mayan astrologer or what? Yeah, my name is uh, uh, Yuriria. And that would be, um, it's in the language of um, the um, uh, middle of the country, a group called um, Tarascos and, and um, uh, Purepechas is the name, proper name, Purepechas. And it's called, uh, it means the red lake or red blood lake, whatever. Because in the, in the, um, um, land be underneath the lake it's red so uh, in the sunset it, it is like it's a red lake it, it, you can perceive it as it is red so that's uh, the name of the lake is Yuriria and also my name the legend goes that uh, maidens in the first uh, month of menstruation would go there uh, to bathe and of course, the the legend of sacrifices. But I think it has to do more with the earth of the lake. So um, it relates uh, to me in the sense that I am um, Pisces, um, and uh, it's um, I'm very connected with water, of course. <clears throat> and uh, having a Sagittarius ascendant is like the connection I always have uh, sought between the land, the water, and the earth, and the sky. So that's my name. Yeah, it's and I beautiful. represent myself as an astrologer. I've been studying Mayan astrology from its sources, trying to discover the real, um, the real, to study the sources as an astrologer would do it. So I presented my conclusions, and uh, even in uh, in uh, New Orleans two years ago, I was there presenting the work. I was there as well. It's too bad I didn't meet you then, but that's good that you go to these things as well, so we're sure to meet again. Yeah, we will. So I did, and I did write a book for uh, uh, here, and the government uh, sponsored it, and it's, uh, it showed the, all the relationships as an astrologer would do, um, uh, of the codexes, the original codexes, or the post-colonial codexes written in, in Mayan. Uh, and um, the correlation, it is astrology speaking. Even the, the codexes uh, post-colonial have uh, astrological language, the signs, the the sun, the eclipses, as we are we are used to work with. So I did the correlation, and I was even for um, a big visit to the those uh, sites, nineteen of them, studying them by day and night, um, looking at the stars, looking at the sunrises and sun sunsets. I had special permit; it was a privilege for me. And all of that came in a program that you can see in YouTube. It's called 
uh, horizontes mayas, so it, it would translate as um, uh, Mayan horizons. And uh, I went to look for the uh, symbols or the zodiac in, in the sites. And I did find the temples for each of the signs, uh, Mayan signs. So I did um, show that uh, in, the, in those programs so you can see them and enjoy everybody for you to enjoy. So a little earlier we were talking about um, the astrology of Mexico and how it supports this spiritual tradition. So talk a little bit, bit about that. What are the symbols for the uh, Mexican chart and how does it actually support um, this reawakening, especially right now, more and more people are being reawakened to this particular wisdom and this astrological knowledge as well. Well, uh, I've been studying for the last two years the... Uh, from two points of view, this this uh, investigation I started before. The last last year I did study. We have 62 ethnic groups in Mexico, so I did study 26 of them um, in this in with the purpose of finding if they have correlations between the sky, the stars, the sun, the moon, and their um, festivities. And this year I'm studying the whole festivities with the the star in Mexico. So I've discovered that every especially because I know I have been studying the worldwide, but in Mexico the the festivities do refer to the sky and the which is to us no surprise. It's just um, a cor corroboration of the situation in the sense that everything that happens in the sky has to happen in Earth. It's not that we are in effect, we're just celebrating the same thing, so to speak. So in Mexico, um, I've been uh, uh, giving this um, uh, investigation for the lottery that has a special zodiac lottery that goes out on Sundays, and every Sunday uh, I give a piece of the investigation in Facebook in, in, and in the, in the actual ticket of the lottery, they have printed the, the, the signs. So I have um, not only the signs, the constellations, but also the theory that goes behind every festivity or even eclipses or things we use in astrology uh, to, to make a statement, to make a discernment or give um, a reading. Uh, so festivities in Mexico do relate to, even now, yes, to the Catholic history or tradition, but even the, the, the Catholic tradition is, um, has a basis on the heavens. Um, the whole medieval calendar is there to prove what I'm saying. And it's also there, it also derives the festivities a little bit more to, from the Roman period and the Roman period from the Mesopotamian and Chaldean and from the Sumer, etc. So it's always a, a story of the skies we are celebrating. So uh, now in Mexico, uh, it, uh, I'm trying to give to the whole country because the tickets go around the country the knowledge that these uh, festivities do relate to the sky and they give their blessings and their luck. So it's a lottery ticket. Anyway, so um, that's the talk, what the talk was about. But um, what's interesting to me about that is really it's that's the way that people come to know astrology. And it actually, like you're saying, oh, it's the lottery. But actually, I think that that makes a very quiet and very profound philosophical statement because it's saying that we are connected to everyone and everything. And even people who are just playing the lottery and they think they're just playing the lottery, actually on some level, they are participating in that. And so it's very powerful to be a part of that, especially in pop culture as you are as part of this um, lottery that a lot of people, lay people who may not be astrologers yet, are actually participating in. Yeah, they know um, now because I've been at least working with some of the sites in the country. In 2012, I went 
all around the country to teach my astrology to the vendors of the ticket lottery. And yes, I was, uh, uh, I was, I'm not a, a salesperson. I'm an astrologer, so I had to teach them what they were selling about. So it was very interesting, and I tried to open them to the knowledge that it was uh, is as long as I'm working there. I want to um, give the astrology um, weight in the sense that is a uh, uh, millenary uh, knowledge that has something very important to say and uh, and getting through that is get going a bit farther i'm not i want to go very far away but uh, for now it's a bit farther than the sun signs that there are other stars like the Pleiades, that Sirius, Polaris, um, that have to, even the, the con other constellations in in other parts of the sky, not only the east-west that we are used to, but also north and south, that things happen there and they do appear in the parties and in the festivities all around the, the world and in Mexico and even the Milky Way. So it's been a discovery in the whole thing. Yeah. So you were saying earlier about um, Mexico, the chart for Mexico has Neptune very dominant. So how is that connected to the way that the spirituality is experienced here in the land? Yeah. Well, um, by the time of the conquest in 1521, Neptune was in Pisces. And... Uh, Mm, the Aztecs and all, not only them, which is a small group, they were the most important, but all M Middle America and even Mayans, they were very connected to the heavens. They knew in advance for survival reasons because of, of the, um, to uh, anticipate if there was going to be a rain or not. They were very aware of the sky. Um, but uh, so the conquest was was anticipated by very omen, but very many omens, a lot of omens. Sorry. So then, um, by the time of the conquest, Neptune has just entered Pisces. And we know that Pisces, uh, Neptune has a cycle of 162 years or so. So the conquest for the as was a tsunami as always with Neptune, absolutely devastating in the sense of the culture, but something did survive, which is what we are uh, trying to rescue. So as a foundation for the modern Mexico, Neptune was there. So um, the, it brought with it confusion, a new religion, uh, also illnesses, a game. Uh, now that I know that the... the, the um, thrill of uh, gambling and betting also appeared there because uh, this, the Aztecs and the ancient people did use this to bet, uh, not to bet, to know the sky, to know the future, but to bet and play game and that, it came with the Spaniards as well, with Neptune. Uh, 162 years later, the Habsburg, the, uh, the dynasty of the Bourbon people, the family went out and came in the Habsburg family. So there was a lot of confusion around here in the colonies about what was going to happen next. And modernity, so to speak, came in and, and Middle Age left, or old colonialism. And also what appeared at the beginning was the cult of the Virgin Mary. And it pervades. So by 162 years, it was the full scale, the Virgin Mary, and all the the importance of the um, religious Mexico, old Mexico, started. 162 years also when Pisces, Neptune went into Pisces, Mexico lost half of its territory to, you know, it's Texas, Texas New Mexico, all uh, Upper California, and all that. And we didn't even notice that so um, in the sense that it was a land nobody's land we were fighting in the in the middle of here in Mexico City about liberalism and conservative etc we were lost in Neptune already and the next the following um, section is or the present section is Neptune in Pisces as you all know and the country is changing 
it's now accompanied by by Chiron in Pisces. So for us, it's very. Um, um, oh, I can see read that in very in very many levels. First of all, Mexico has always been very unreliable in terms of latitude uh, and rain, so it doesn't rain um, regularly or at the same time. It is very changeable. That's the main reason why the ancients did study the heaven, because they had to anticipate if it was going to rain or not. And it's the reason why they moved so much and how and absolutely the reason why they disappeared and appear. They didn't move to another dimension. They just died of hunger because it didn't rain. So now we see the, the independence War of Independence and the War of Revolution, which began at the turn of the 20th century, they both were triggered by dry, by drought. And the drought was broken last year after 72 years. So now, uh, last year it was, a, uh, it, we had rain like never before. The, um, the dams in the north of the country were filled up last year uh, for the first time. Uh, now with the Jupiter in in uh, in Leo, we have this beautiful weather, but no rain, and it will cost. So uh, and so the the history of the country, in the sense of reality and uh, weather, it has to do with this. In the sense of spirituality, it speaks about the strength of the religious religion state of mind in Mexico, and even goes to magic in the coherent side. In the non-coherent side, it does speak, so t sadly to say, it has to be said, in addictions. And um, uh, alcohol alcoholism is uh, pervasive. And from that, all the hard uh, substances are there. I'm not going to say it's not there. So between that non-coherent and the coherent, we as Mexicans we go and that that accounts for the confusion politically speaking that you don't know when the right is right or the left is left we are always crossed uh, so um, Neptune is very much a sense of our being and Neptune especially in Pisces so I expect for the 14 uh, for these years uh, it still goes up to 2025 I think uh, for the change for the country to change absolutely absolutely like it did, it has three the the previous three times maybe it's drastic to say but i think the energetic reforms being held, upheld now and uh, the situation with the drug cartels and even this addiction the country is saying has to be um, counter encounter with our faith and our magic and our knowledge of the sky. Um, that's a solution I see because it's the same uh, energy and I think it will not, uh, we cannot erase it. We just have to uh, upper, uh, a level, uh, raise the level to more spirituality and hopefully with, uh, Neb with the other planets, Pluto and Uranus, especially in the square, gives us a bit of ground to stabilize this energy. But Mexico is really this, um, it's an example, a living example of a collectivity um, immersed in the energy of Neptune. And you add Chiron to that. I think um, it especially speaks very profoundly. As soon as you said Chiron, yes, Chiron is in Pisces as well, speaks very profoundly to healing very deeply those wounds. Because I'm very much of the belief, and I, I know it's been said by many, many uh, spiritual thinkers over the years, that I think of addiction as a spiritual disease. And then I think of addiction as ultimately it's a, I know Scott M. Peck said that it's a desire to merge with the divine. And because you feel that disconnect is why you desire to merge. And I think Chiron, I mean, I just think about in my own life and so many people I've seen, especially since uh, Chiron has gone into Pisces and especially because 
sort of we had this collective moment around the world when the Mayan calendar was ending and it really brought a lot of attention and also a lot of love and a lot of energy and a lot of people flocked to these sacred sites these ancient cities and a lot of them didn't realize that they were actually honoring these ancient energies and this ancient wisdom but i think about how it actually did something really good for the spiritual uh the spirit here for the mayan spirit here as well to to receive that type of energy and so as i heard was listening to you talk i was thinking about chiron really how it's not just about now getting lost in that neptunian energy but chiron should help bring so much healing first by as you said exposing the wounds and then hopefully helping people to um reconnect and reawaken this this wisdom and this the ancestral love and the ancestral knowledge that is there as well. Yeah, I agree absolutely with you. Um, ex uh, just to point that uh, Chiron does bring this healing energy and this philosophy of life that ha that will be renewed, but also it teaches with it teaches, and it's a not it's not really a good guy. It it is hard. It's a hard lesson, and um, and we are in it. So I'm hoping to give some perspective i do every time i i am i have the opportunity to give a conference around the country or or a speech or even in a reading to point out that there is a lesson to be heard a, a wound that has to be acknowledged and um, a philosophy to be, to develop from that so i think mexico will will come out although Painfully, it will come out stronger. But isn't that always the way, right? Pain leads to the greatest beauty. I like to say in my work, I say all the time, the universe is wise and loving. That's sort of like my slogan. And everything I do is to affirm that in the world. But that, that doesn't mean that there aren't really, really unfortunate things and cruelty and real tragedy and real injustices. But I do think that we can choose to interpret events in a way that does move us towards greater love and greater wisdom as well. I think that's that's our aim or objective as astrologers. Otherwise, it has no point in reading anything. If we were to read Doomsday, then we better we might as well stop because nothing would we could do. But that idea you say that 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 we can signal the upper part or the spiritual part or the learning of it even though pain, even if it's painful it's our job yeah so i mean i feel like i could talk to you for hours really um uh, i'm hoping that you can share a little bit about just i mean uh, you've spoken a little bit already about the mayan spirituality the mayan astrology maybe very quickly because i've uh, i want the viewers, especially people who are new to Mayan astrology or students of astrology, because I know a lot of students of astrology enjoy the program. I would really love if you shared a little bit about, because the presentation you just did was on the the um, celebrations of the light, right? Uh, basically the sun signs. So I'm hoping just in a very brief way, you can share a little bit about the Mayan perspective of the different signs, because that will help people out there to at least get that initial connection with this very beautiful astrology and spirituality. Well, um, the basis I have for the uh, Mayan astrology is the Dresden Codex, no, I'm sorry, the Paris Codex, which in uh, in a page, page 19 and 20, there are the animals of the, some animals that the gods hanged in the sky, so they teach with their, uh, with their life or ways uh, the humans. So they appear, uh, almost all, all of them, in uh, full, hanging from the mouth. And so at the big, um, there's a teacher I did study with a beautiful teacher, a woman called Maria Luisa Kirchner, and she studied with a Mayan and, uh, from Tabasco uh, called Hector Calderon. So they, he, both of them, but he especially identified the constellations precise for the signs, for these signs. And he set a date for them, which I agree absolutely. I didn't move them, and I just checked that those constellations came out with the sun every time. So they were uh, they 
come out as really as a sidereal, sidereal zodiac. There's a procession, of course. I think procession answers from the Mayan point of view to the months of the the solar months, which are a different sequence from the astrological signs. So uh, the first sign, or the, they begin it, begin it because it's there in the Dresden Codex. It's original. It's another one. The calendar starts with the uh, uh, appearance of the uh, Pleiades with the sun. And the Pleiades are the rattle of the snake. So the first sign should be the snake. And people born in in the, in the snake sign are people uh, that's between the 4th of May and the 28th of May are very down-to-earth people, of course. They are very precise and very... Um, Um, very um, knowledge, uh, practical and knowledge. They can transform themselves just as uh, shed one skin, just as the naturally the, the the snake does, shed one life and start another one. That's what they say. Following it is tool, tool, which is the rabbit, and the rabbit uh, is a. 28 days later, um, the rabbit is a sign of people, very tender, very sweet, just as the rabbit. Uh, they are very prone, since the uh, rain started there, they are prone to drinking <laughs> because, uh, because of the resonance with the rain. But they are also very sensitive people, uh, tender and loving. They are very prolific, just as the Gemini sign, Gemini Cancer, and so they are very prolific and um, uh, innocent. And following it is Ak, which is the turtle. And the turtle for them is a sign of the grandmother, is a sign of uh, people that are very much into ancestors, uh, uh, that know their ways in their feelings and, or, and know and know their ways in the land so they are very it's not that they are very slow i haven't found that i have found that they are very um they can move their adjust their their um, pace in life and that's their main gift following it ha is um uh, tech no tech no uh, the um, but Debat. And it was very honored in uh, Mayan culture, in, and it was put in the sky because they were very grateful. Remember, that it's very hot land, and to um, escape from hot and dry, hotness and dryness, they would go into the caves uh, where there is water, sometimes very deep and sometimes very shallow, but that would be a very fresh space with water where they could take refuge. Uh, and the way in of the cave and out of the cave are bats. So uh, they would perceive them as as uh, the animal that would go to the, that show them the way into darkness and out of it. And also the bats go out in uh, with everybody. So uh, picture or imagine yourselves, uh, the Mayan, they cannot, they ca we cannot survive as individuals. They were very keen of that. So they move in groups, just as the bat did. So they thought the bat was very familiar, very uh, into, they would look after the group, not uh, isolated. So these caves is, is like the cenotes. cenotes. See, the cenotes. Um, and, but even in the, in the southern part, very mountainous part, in Oaxaca and all that, they, they are even called the tzotziles, which uh, they are honoring the, the bat. Um, I don't know if it's clear to them why, but it's it's this knowledge of being together that helps them even now. Their strength is in their uh, in the closeness of their group. It has a gift and it has a challenge because uh, it has a gift. They have uh, preserved their culture. The challenge is that they don't want to change their culture, and uh, it's it's a contradiction. In order to survive, they have to change and change the ways, but they are appreciated because they haven't changed ways. So it's a 
challenge even for the whole country. In fin. the, after the bat, there is the, the sec, which is the uh, Scorpio. Uh, no, it doesn't coincide, right? Because we are talking about the period of September. Um, the part of uh, Virgo and part of um, Leo and part of Virgo, but mainly Virgo. It's mainly Virgo. So uh, it's Virgo. And so sec means venom or medicine in Maya. And the, these people, like like all Virgos, you know when they say, they always speak truth. But sometimes it's venom and sometimes it's uh, medicine. It depends on the moment. So they were appreciated on that uh, because of that. I like uh, Scorpios, uh, not the same, but they're a little animal. They hide or they are very private people, very quiet. And they would perceive this... Uh, idea that the mother would hold their little ones on the back. Have you seen that picture? Yeah. And so they are very, it seems like the little ones would eat the mother, but that's really a, a folklore. So it doesn't happen. But the idea is that the mother would even, or the service is in such amount that he, she would give life to, to their own. And I found Virgos are very like that, or you, I don't have to explain that. So uh, people born in that period, the problem is their uh, speech, timing speech. After that is Kej, uh, which is the um, deer. And deers are absolutely precious for the, they are in the heavens, of course, in various instances, as I have explained. And they are very sweet. They, they are connected to the heaven through their horns. Um, they like to be uh, also in groups, but um, not in groups as the bat. The difference here is that they are, they they give um, a sense, they give uh, uh like coach, like a coach, they give knowledge, they are teachers, uh, they connect heavens and earth, they are very elegant. The, uh, dear people have even a dear face. That is very amazing because I have found that the face of the people do correlate with the face of the animal. So dear people are very beautiful people, very thin people, uh, elegant and harmonious and like, just like the deer. After the deer comes the owl. And uh, old people are very big, and they have uh, the big chest and the big eyes. They are very serious people. Um, they have they see the darkest part of the year, or the growth of the darkest part. They are very conspicuous. They are portrayed in uh, Mayan lore and uh, tales and legends as the minister to the to the Itzamna, which is the most important god so they are very serious and and circumspect and they don't like like to laugh or being laughed at even that, not that and uh, this correlation with the dark part of the of the sky or the year gives them the correlation uh, saying that every time a, a, an owl cries or somebody's going to die but it's not really that is the year is dying that's why the correlation is there. After the owl, there comes the iguana. You know now the iguana, so it's called itzamna, itzam, and you have seen iguanas resting in the in the sun, watching all over and waiting for the best insect to come by and bite or the best flower to. So they are very. They were perceived as the great cousins of the big iguana, which is the Milky Way. But uh, so the character of them, which is half Sagittarius, half uh, uh, mostly Sagittarius, have a little bit of. Uh, I I I skipped one sign, which is the Sagittarius is the Kutz, which is the um, turkey, but not the turkey you know. But tur have you seen turkeys in, in the, which are? Emerald color and turkey, and uh, uh, the head is, tur is uh, what's the color? Blue. Uh, blue turkeys. Do you mean the peacock? Is that what you're talking about? The big feathers, the no. colorful? Oh, it's a turkey. It's an actual turkey. No, it's a space, it's a mountain turkey. Okay. It's special to this land, uh, to the Maya land, and you haven't seen it then. It has a turquoise 
head this color turquoise wow. with little dots red dots just like this and in the the feathers are not like the peacock but, but they are emerald iridescent green uh, and blue and even purple and they flock they do fly from the from they don't fly they don't migrate but they do uh, they are on the ground they flock all over to the top of the trees and they rest on the top of the trees they are absolutely beautiful amazing and um, they were very appreciated just as the meat of the deer also the meat of the peacock and um, they appear um, a lot of times uh, Uh, as a gift to the gods, um, there was this legend that the peacock was very full of himself, and there was a contest in the in the jungle for the to decide for Itamna to decide which was the most beautiful bird in the jungle, and the turkey uh, wanted to participate, but he has the puhui, which is a little bird with three feathers. Actually, three feathers. I'm not exaggerating. Please, little one, lend me your, your feathers because if you lend me your feathers, I'm sure I can win. But uh, Turkey, um, Kutz, you have everything. You are beautiful as, as you are. No, no, no. Just give me that and I'm sure I can, I can make it. All right. And I'll come back and celebrate with you. All right. So the conquest goes on. As, and as such, of course, the Kutz, Kutz, the turkey, wins because he is the, declared the most beautiful a bird in the jungle so uh, he's off celebrating when all the birds come very sad and they found a little one without its three feathers and what's happened what is happening to you why are not celebrating I'm waiting for the turkey to come back and celebrate with me he will not come back ah, he said that so they went off to tell uh, Big Samna to tell all the story uh, to accuse him really and so Samna gets angry with the turkey Mostly because he didn't fulfill his promise. So he said, his, he, uh, or order, you will always be beautiful, but you will have an ugly voice with it. So that's why you have... So the challenge for the kuts are they are always beautiful. And they, are, they like to show off themselves, but they have to watch out insecurity and to uh, saying uh, something not nice really not fulfilling their promises. Next to it uh, is Itzamna. Itzamna is uh, what I was saying, the iguana, and they are resting all the time in, in, in the best spot. They are <laughs> the most important people in the Zodiac. They, uh, they don't have to, do, to show off themselves like the Kuts, but they know they are cousins to the big iguana, which is the way Milky Way already said that. And so they are very important, very, very... Uh, they all, I always looking and watching for the best thing to happen to them, for the, the best thing to have, the best place to be. That's it. They want us. And after them, there comes it comes bats, bats, which is the monkey. And there are two kinds of, of monkey in Yucatan. The monkey is a, 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 a arachnic bone, uh, the word in English, mono araña, which is a very small monkey, but very um, capable with its tail. And also there is a crying monkey, which uh, has a, a big back here, a big uh, uh, pouch. And so he shouts and he can be heard kilometers away. Three, four, you have seen, heard them in Palenque, I think. So the monkey have these qual the monkey born people have these qualities they are born with uh, dexterous hands they were considered the monkeys the most practical and wise uh, animal of the jungle everybody should go uh, was to go out to the was to look for the monkey and ask them how to do things and the monkey would think and move and do things and he would explain how to do things in a practical way and so born people born in this sign are very practical very uh, astute and they know how to very intelligent and how they know how to organize things and do things the challenge is that they have to uh, develop something new knowledge not just old knowledge <coughs> i'm sorry After that comes the the halcón, 
How do you say that in English? It's not the eagle. It's a kind of eagle. <coughs> I'm sorry, but it's... Um, Would you like some coffee? Because we're here very early in the morning, and uh, my coffee is sort of behind the camera, so I won't get it. But uh, I completely understand that. I, I know I remember recently I did an interview as part of a spiritual summit, and I was talking about the nodes. And the woman, uh, the wonderful, wonderful, I think her name was Kim uh, Wilborn, asked me about, uh, can you talk a little bit about the nodes through the signs? And it was a one-hour interview, and I just kept talking for the whole hour. <laughs> and it was radio, so I was fortunate it and that I could just have my water on the side but I completely understand and I so appreciate you sharing all this so thank you You're so welcome. Um, absolutely true. thank you for the opportunity so cos is the uh, cos is the name of the bird it's a kind of um, hawk I'm sorry yeah thank you hawk so the hawk was the bird that fly the highest and the Mayan and old Mesoamerica people really looked at the heavens for answers so they would envy, sort of, uh, quote unquote, the hawk for going so far away into the sky. Um, so it was a constellation that really is sometimes up in the heaven, in the zenith. I, I've seen it there. It corresponds to Pegasus, you know, the, the four stars of Pegasus. So the hawk people are very uh, intellectual. They like theories. They look upon the sky. They have... They are so intelligent. They get up. They fed up. Uh, they get fed up with people, normal people. And so, what are the t what dates are these? What's the date of this? Uh, for the hawk, eight of February to eight of March. So a bit of uh, Aquarius Pisces. They are very loyal. Hawks are decide one couple, and they go for one couple in 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 life. They they don't start. Um, they are lo they they um, relate to one person and that's it. They find it late or hard to find, but th that's a trait they have a very important. One. And the thing is that they are very intelligent and they develop theories and they are in the heaven. Uh, next to it is Balam. Balam is a jaguar. The jaguar is, was very honorous, powerful animal. You know, is the big uh, cat, the big feline for these lands, and it was honored because of this. Uh, they have a very strong bite, and they would go immediately to their prey to the head, and the bite was so strong they could crush like a nut opener, nut cracker. The, the shell of the tortoise, for example. So they would go to the uh, head, the um, skull, and bite the skull. The skull and they, that's the way they pray. They kill, they hunt. So um, they relate that to the, to the strength of the feline and the, the, the intelligence. So people born in, in, uh, in this sign are very strong in the heart, but they have to watch out to bite the head of the other one to go and and um, and pray on the intentions, ideas um, on the of the other person. So they have to watch out. They are strong, but they have to to hold their strength, spiritual strength. And finally, there's Peck, which is the dog. Uh, the, the comes up to from um, almost April, uh, eight of six, eight of April to the fourth of May, which is where I started. And Peck was very as you know, old dogs. You know, the Solo Squintle is the dog for this land, and it's a very special dog. Have you seen it? It's a special dog with no hair. So uh, you have to grow into liking it. Some are very because yeah because you are used to hear what's happening to this bald <laughs> dog, little dog. But they are absolutely adorable. In this, they ha they are very small and and fat, and they there's a race that is very long and very thin. They are very elegant, and they used to walk in the jungles and and. Uh, give notice in advance, warning of uh, other animals or enemies. It was very important, but also it was meat. 
uh, it was also medicinal because it's very hot. So for people that were sick of uh, humidity and uh, sore articulations, the 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 animal would sit on top, and it was like a hot um, pillow. Now, so they are like that. I I noticed that. I know. Uh, so uh, they were they also it was food and it was offering for the gods. So. The, I want to just make a note that uh, people here would eat anything because uh, these are not the Great Plains. There were not a full hordes, uh, hordes is the way, full hordes of deer, like there were full hordes of uh, of uh, bisontes, how do you call that in English? Uh, bison in, in, the, in the plains in north in the, over there. So, uh, and if it didn't rain, <coughs> everything died, including the animals. So that's why they explored uh, on different kind of food, vegetables, and also insects, and also all kind like armadillo, and uh, iguana, and dogs, and of course rabbit and turkey and everything. But they did have to explore for survival reasons, and that's why the, the richness of the Mexican pre-Hispanic um, uh, cuisine art is uh, is there no, because of mere survival reasons. So that's the and with the peck people, they are very loyal. They know the meaning of friendship. They can perceive danger very quickly. Uh, they smell it. Uh, they smell it, and the rabbit hear it, which is a difference. And with uh, Peck, uh, we arrive. Uh, so the, the the challenge for Peck is all uh, is uh, of course fidelity, uh, as in the terms of of um, of uh, couple. They are not very. Uh, they they like <laughs> other mates at the same time, so they have to be tamed. Um, that's that's the reading in in astrology for now because I've I've been of course the reading of the of each signs uh, the relationship with the heavens is there is clear as I have explained in all the old codexes and even in the colonial codexes they ha they had to be very intelligent uh, because they correlate for example there is a, a reading on Aquarius and in a very small bracket in a corner they would write monkey <laughs> just in a list monkey what's here but they would notice that with that they say no that all those characteristics correspond to monkey no so it's there if you care to read all the chilambalam which are the post-colonial codexes all are astrological codexes astrological and medical codex codexes books okay Right? Yeah. So that's all the signs there? Yeah, 13 in, in total. I think I didn't miss none of them. And so people knew their sign. Like, yeah. did, it was part of the culture to know your sign like it is now? Yeah. I think the whole interpretation goes like this. Um, they would signal the sign. Of course, what I'm saying is sidereal sign. But also there was an interpretation of the day which is what most people know about the 20 days, but that was the last part. They will also take into account the month of the year, which are the 18th months, and we have the meanings and interpretations because Landa did write about them, and that's what the, those are the basis for what some people call astrological knowledge, but I think they are only part of it. They would, ha they would add the signs as a I already explained, they would add the position or the situation of the Milky Way to it, um, and they would add what was in the direction of the north, the, the polar, the stars accompanying Polaris, they would add to that, in the, you know, it's a little spoon, and the handle is sometimes in the pointing earth, sometimes pointing east, sometimes west, sometimes up. I think that's, um, according to some of the readings, I think they did relate to, to that. So, um, and the moon, of, I already said the moon. So, uh, and the long count, which uh, which is um, based on Jupiterian, on Jupiter days. So, 
that would amount the whole prediction. I don't think only in the day or the number of the day, because the numbers also had meaning, of course. But as that, that's, it is as if, as if I predict you, uh, some your birth if you were born today, because you were born on the second uh, Sunday two. Sunday two August. No, there's much more to it to say. So that I think they did that, and I, uh, I'm now in the process of sustaining it through the readings to discern really all the qualities they took into account. Because every time there is a, a reading, an astronomical reading or a calendrical reading in the stones, in the stelae, or even in the little ceramics, or even in the books, there's a whole reading, not just the day of the the day and the number or the month, they do have other signs and they correlate for the whole meaning. I feel like I could talk to you forever. I love, love listening to you. I'm so grateful for this moment for so many reasons. One is that um, just your knowledge and your beauty and the love that you share is incredible. And just watching you talk to me is amazing. <laughs> and as you were talking, I was like, I have more questions, I have more questions. But I know that I've been taking quite a bit of your time, and I thank you so much. But just really um, thank you for sharing your love and your knowledge for this amazing spirituality and also for your country, like for Mexico, the history and the present and the future. Um, and my hope, my intention is that um, there are other people out there who in some way are awakened just a little bit uh, to the very, very powerful energy that is here. And it really is a very uh, spiritual energy. It's a very transformative energy. And I can testify to that personally. But just uh, just what you've shared, I just felt that it was, uh, it was a very powerful moment as you were sharing. And I thank you so much for being here and sharing it with me and sharing it with my audience. Thank you. Thank you, Nadi. It's an honor for me. It's a pleasure. And you're a sweet person. Thank you for this interview and the uh, opportunity for me. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here to celebrate Mexico, Mexican spirituality, Mayan astrology uh, with Yuri and with me. Until we connect again, take care. <laughs>